everybody, welcome to my tutorial on how to build a pinhole camera. So the first thing that you want to start with, your box. Um, here I've just laid out all the materials that um, I'm going to use during my uh, procedure, but the box is definitely the most important part uh, for your box. Um, well, at least for, for this pinhole camera, I have chosen a box that I had on hand. It was a small Macy's jewelry box, and um, what attracted me to this box was the lid. The lid has these um, overlapping sides that go over the edge of the box and that helps seal out any extra light that might be filtering through. Um, it, it's just an added precaution to making a light proof box because light proof is what you want this is what you want this box to be. And also I've already uh, prepared this box by cutting out this middle hole. I used an exacto knife to make it as uh, clean and precise as I could and that will this will be where the pinhole will be in the box and moving on to the pinhole this is an older pinhole that I made a long time ago you can see the paint is kind of chipping off I'm gonna have to repaint it but if you look closely in the very center there is a little pinhole right there and um, it, I made it using a needle. Um, you can use a lot of other things to make a pinhole. Um, what, like, such as you can use one of these, uh, a pin, but just keep in mind that the larger the point, like the difference between a needle and this pin, it's quite a big difference even though you can't really tell. Uh, the pin has a much larger diameter than the needle and so you'll get a larger pinhole if you use a pin versus a needle and I'll explain why that matters in just a second um, but once you have punctured your uh, piece of soda can that you've cut out right in the middle in the exact center um, then you can uh, sand it down around the puncture hole on both sides here I've kind of painted over that sanded part but on both sides you want to make sure you've sanded it down because you don't want any extra bits of metal that have kind of come up from the puncturing process. Uh, you don't want that to interfere with your um, image because every little tiny detail uh, matters in this, in this sort of situation. And so um, I'm going to use black paint and my paintbrush and I'm going to black out the inside of my pinhole camera box. So basically I'm going to paint all in here and then even for extra measure I'll probably paint a little bit along the edges as far as the, as far as the lid goes down. And I'll also paint the inside of the lid. Okay, so now that I've painted the interior all black, now I am ready to attach the pinhole. And I've also already touched up this pinhole right here, so it's all black on both sides. Um, so it doesn't really matter which side is facing the inside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I get the pinhole itself as exactly in the middle as possible. And so here I'm just going to kind of uh, look at where it is, kind of guesstimate. So I'd say like right about there or right about here. And then I'm going to grab this ruler and go from corner to corner. And I could probably, yeah, that looks about right, right there. That's probably about as centered as, as it's going to get. So to mark the place where I've got it, I'm going to go ahead and start attaching uh, duct tape, little strips of duct tape that I've cut out. And so I'm going to press that in and make sure that's attached and do that to the other side too. Um, and the reason why I'm doing it on the top, I'm going to do it on the top and on the bottom, um, on the other side too, because I want to make sure that any, any creases or um, any edges anywhere um, don't let any light coming through. So go ahead and grab another piece of duct tape. I'm just going along doing all the edges on the outside. And once I have done the outside, making sure that the edges are nice and sealed, 
I'm going to go ahead and go to this other side. And so you can see that the duct tape is obviously not black, so I'm going to have to paint over that also and make sure that everything is um, all black and light proof on the inside. So every little bit counts. Every little bit helps. Okay, so now that everything is in place, I um, have painted over the duct tape on the inside so that it's completely black also. So there won't be any light bouncing around inside of this. It'll be very light safe once we seal it up. Uh, I'm going to explain just why it is important to keep it completely light proof. Uh, this is a negative that I made using um, a similar pinhole camera. It's uh, inverted, so it's got the blacks and the whites uh, opposite the, the way that they should be, and that's because the way uh, that the light shines on this paper, it sort of, you can think of it as like burning the paper where the light hits uh, with this light sensitive paper. Um, it doesn't actually do that, but it's just the way that the chemicals uh, on the paper react to light. Uh, so the whiter parts are where blacks are going to be, and the darker parts are where the lights are going to be. And this I exposed around for five minutes uh, with this sort of pinhole camera. That'll be the amount of time that I took. Your camera that you build will obviously have a different time. The, the amounts of time will vary for each and uh, every camera that you make. And so that is a good example of a negative because it's all in focus. Um, there is a good amount of black versus white. There's a good balance. This is not a good negative and it's very underexposed. It was not um, exposed long enough to let the blacks and the, the shadows uh, really come through. And also these markings right here, this is where uh, there were light leaks. And so the light, the extra light that came from the corners of the camera came and reacted with the paper right here. And so it does not look good on your photograph. So bad example, don't do that. Uh, I exposed this and you can see the finished uh, product of that. So you can see it's been inverted. So this is the right way and the blacks and the whites are the way that they should be. And so you have to do this at a uh, photography lab or if you have a developing process nearby, uh, you can make uh, these right here. But this tutorial is mostly focusing on just how to build your pinhole camera so you can get to that point. So now that everything is all blacked out, I'm going to use this just as an example. Um, you can fit it inside. Mine is cut to the size of the box. Uh, yours might not be. You might have to seal it down with um, some tape on the back side or some sticky stuff on the, on the back side. Hopefully nothing on top of it because that could interfere with the edges. Um, but once you have it resting inside and in, uh, as centered as possible, you can go ahead and put on the lid. And so I've blacked out a lawn here. So really my concern is going to be um, where this kind of bows in, this bows in a little bit, and then also kind of around the corners. So I've cut some duct tape out and you want to really make sure while you're putting on your tape, you can also use black electrical tape. I just am using this duct tape that I have because I have it on hand. You can basically build a pinhole camera with a lot of materials that you have on hand. It's uh, really convenient that way. And so I'm just making sure that I've got the creases really nice and the corners I'm going to overlap with more duct tape. So, and of course, you will be doing this in a dark room. Um, you do not want your light sensitive paper to be exposed to any light before you put it in your camera. So this is just a, a practice situation of me sealing up a camera. Uh, but if you were going to actually take a photo with this um, camera, you'd be doing this in a dark room. Um, I would go into my bathroom because there's no windows in there and there's a tiny bit of light coming out from underneath the door. 
and that way I can still sort of see what's going on, but the light itself won't hurt the paper. Any bit of light, you need to be really careful. And not every um, pinhole camera works with, um, or you don't have to use light sensitive paper to take your image. You can also use film, but for the process that I know how to do, it is um, the light sensitive paper kind. So. Now that I have this all sealed and the edges are nice, um, my pinhole camera is ready to take a picture. So one last thing before uh, we go, again the size of the pinhole matters because uh, if you have the difference between like a needle and a pin. Um, the needle will get a smaller pinhole, the pin will get a bigger one, or you can use another puncturing tool, but the size of the pinhole matters because uh, the smaller it is, the clearer your image will be. But it will also take longer uh, to get that image because less light is able to go through the pinhole um, at once. So larger pinhole, faster exposure time, the faster you'll get your images, but they will not be as clear as a smaller pinhole. Okay, so one last thing. Um, before you're completely ready to walk out of the dark room, you want to make sure that the pinhole itself is covered up. You only want to expose the pinhole right when you're going to go and take your picture. So I have this little piece of duct tape. I fold it over the ends to make a little flap so I can lift it up. And I'm just going to keep that pinhole covered. So when I do go to expose my paper, I can peel this back and kind of, I guess, put it like that if it will stay. But that will, um, and then once your once your time runs up, then you can cover it up again, and your uh, light sensitive paper is once again completely dark. So that way, no extra light leak. You want to always make sure that there's a cap on your uh, on your pinhole. So that's basically a finished pinhole camera right there.